Hi everyone and a very warm welcome back to Warno. Today something a little bit different. Hopefully this is the first of many of a getting to grips with Warno series. Now a lot of things are still changing in Warno, it is still early access at the point of time of recording this and they are constantly making balance changes, adding new units, adding and changing bits that are already in certain divisions. As a result it makes it very difficult for me to do guides and stuff like this because there are definitely going to be bits that change and therefore it might make something I do completely obsolete and then I'm giving people the wrong information. This however shouldn't change and the reason that I'm doing this today is because I've seen a lot of people ask about it. Even people who've been playing for a number of weeks in the 10v10s I've noticed their names popping up and then they've still asked questions about this which means that obviously something's not getting through to people and that is about forward deployment. Now it can be a little bit confusing because technically there are multiple levels of forward deployment. There are forward deployment forces which are the airborne forces or the ones with the parachute on their little icon here on their little thumbnail as it were and then also if you look over at their details tab they have the airborne little tag on there the little flag as they will have other flags but airborne is one of them here now this unit is trained to be inserted into the battlefield through the air highly mobile but lightly equipped airborne troops can be rapidly deployed ahead of a regular army now that's not entirely true because not all of these units come in a helicopter a lot of them can just come in a vehicle but it's about the fact that they can be deployed ahead of other forces and the reason I think a bit of confusion comes in is that recon can also be forward deployed but to a recon forward deployment line and then to confuse matters more perhaps you can have recon that are airborne and therefore forward deployable at the forward deployment line not just the recon forward deployment line and that's where it starts to get confusing when I start talking about that forward deployment plus recon forward deployment plus recon that has forward deployment but not recon forward deployment you can see why people get confused so this is basically intended to be a short video just to show this off in game now as it stands right now as of making this video unless I've made some horrible mistake while I've been looking through the divisions which have access to airborne forward deployment troops are the 82nd airborne division that is the premise of their whole division the second panzer grenadiers the first british tank have a few the second british infantry division have the sas which can be forward deployed but that is all the 11th e french division they are airborne effectively as well the 35th airborne for the russians which are again airborne so they have a focus on it the 4th Motsuchin Division have a few. The KDA Berserk Erfurt have just two sets of units. And the Unternehmen Zentrum also have some forward deployment troops. They are easily identifiable by, for the Americans, they have AB or Airborne in their name. They also all have this lovely icon of a parachute on their own individual thumbnails. And then they will also have this little icon here. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious this is what they are. However, then knowing what to do with them in-game and knowing that you've built a division with them is a different matter entirely. So let's have a quick look at one of my battle groups. So let's scroll down and have a look at my 82nd, okay? That I made in January. I've probably updated it a wee bit since then, but you get the idea. Logistics. Technically, the... Command Humvee there is forward deployable. So you can forward deploy that at the forward deployment line. So if you want to cap points really quickly at the start, you can take that. No problem. I actually have the Command Chopper in this deck just because I wanted to try it out. And then, obviously, this is an airborne deck. All the infantry, pretty much except for a few, are airborne. In fact, weirdly, it's the aero rifles that aren't, but everything else is airborne in this deck. Now, what I will note straight away is obviously that these guys are coming in in Humvees. They're not all coming in in helicopters. If I, I can click on any of them. And they're coming in in Humvees or little Jeeps or whatever else, you know. They're not coming in helicopters. The only ones that come in helicopters are actually the aero rifles and the aero rifles leader. So 
just because they're airborne in the game doesn't mean they have to come in in a helicopter. That not might be the same for every set of units, but at least, you know, when you're talking about these big divisions, that is the case. And then, depending on the division, there will be other things which are airborne as well. So, for example, the 82nd Airborne Division also get a tow Humvee, which is forward deployable. You can see that there. I've actually got some in the deck. You can also have Recon, which is forward deployable. As I say, Recon has its own forward deployment line, which is Recon deployment, I guess. And then they can also have the Airborne forward deployment to push them even further. And I'm going to go into a game and show you this. So don't worry. We're going to have a look at it in a minute. But, and then anti-air here, again, the AB Stingers, they come in a Humvee and they're forward deployable. The Avengers Paras, the Avenger basically, which is a Humvee with Stingers on the back, again, it is forward deployable. The Vulcan Cannon is forward deployable. So it might not just be infantry, you might have other vehicles that are forward deployable, other units. So keep that in mind when you are looking at your divisions and your decks. But now let's hop into a random game and we'll have a look at why this can be important and exactly where those lines are. Okay, welcome to the game map. I've chosen Vertigo because I think it's a really easy to understand map that, you know, lots of us have seen played in tournaments. It's been in the game a while. We know it's perhaps not completely balanced and perhaps it's more favorable to one side than the other, shall we say? Namely because of where certain towns are placed. <laughs> this one here. Um, uh, but it's all about sometimes deployment. Now, if we started at the other side and we were the only people with forward deployment, we'd have a little bit of an advantage. Uh, but if the other team have it as well, then it puts it back in their favor. But let's have a look at deployment. So the first thing I'm going to do is point out that this is the standard deployment zone. Yeah, most people are familiar with this. It's the same as it was in Wargame red dragon you've got this deployment zone you can put your units in here so i can put down let's have a standard unit shall we an apache and i can only place it in this zone i can't put it anywhere else incorrect position can't put it anywhere else but i can plonk it down there job done then you have recon and you'll notice here i do have some forward deployment troops or airborne troops called the airborne scouts but let's have a look at some standard ones first. So, obvious choice, Bradley. Great unit. Now I've selected the Bradley, you'll notice that not only do I have the standard blue square, or blue oblong, I also now have a new area around that. You'll notice it's got rounded edges, but the idea is that now I can deploy within a radius of that initial point. And this is the recon deployment radius. So you'll know that I can put stuff here, for example. So what I'm going to do is, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to put down a few standard recon units with no particular purpose other than I just want to show where these lines are. So these guys are all right on that line. Yeah, and we'll put one on that road there as well, as far up as it can go. So there we go. We've got a line across the map. That is our forward deployment line for recon. So our recon deployment line. Now, if I select the airborne scouts, you'll notice that I can put these guys even further forward now. And it's quite a chunk of distance in the grand scheme of things. I can put them all the way there. I mean, that's, you know, if we turn to the side of the map, that's a good few seconds ahead to get into Alpha. And I think this is probably the main point of airborne units, is it gives you a head start in getting into a defensive position. What people will often do to combat that is to use helicopter-based troops because they go pretty fast as well. In particular, helicopter-based recon infantry. So they can put these helicopters here and they will race along potentially faster than the airborne scouts. But the beauty is that I'm not too concerned about helicopters when playing as the 82nd because I can put down a forward deployment stinger, an airborne stinger unit. I can put down my forward deployment Avenger, which can fire on the move. And I can also stick down a forward deployment Vulcan cannon with a vehicle and deploy that up at the front as well. Obviously, you know, there's a cost 
to using airborne troops. They are a little bit more expensive than standard troops, but they reach the front faster, they allow you to get into a defensive position faster, and that's all beneficial, right? But you're paying for that benefit. And the same goes here. I've got loads of infantry. So, great thing. Let's put a tow to somewhere and get it really far forward at the start. So we could stick it down here. If I just select it. And then I hit Y and we can deploy it in that building. And then we'll then have coverage across there. Which is great. And that's one of the big advantages is getting into a defensive position to stop enemy infantry or enemy vehicles getting near towns. So another good example, military police. We've seen those used a lot. They're really good at taking out transport vehicles. So we stick them right at the front of this line here, right up there. Actually, it looks like it's slightly over the line, doesn't it? It's like right on the very edge there of that blue zone. But we could tell those guys to get out in there. And chances are they're going to get there as the enemy troops arrive, even in choppers. So they're going to be well placed to act in a defensive manner. Because we're starting that much closer. I mean, it's difficult to measure the distance because there's no line drawing tool here. But if you think about that point in alpha to there, it's what? If we move over, about a third of my screen, probably. But then if you think about where the enemy troops will be starting, if they're starting there, and their forward deployment for recon, or their recon line is like here, they've got more than that of the screen to go. If we go there, they've got almost half the screen. A little bit less, probably. But you get the idea, you know, to get to that town, they've definitely got about half the screen. And if they're wanting to come from here to get to that town, it's slightly over half the screen. So forward deployment does make a huge difference in terms of getting into an area quickly. That's not to say it's the be-all and end-all. Yes, defending is easier, but it means that airborne forces usually lack heavier artillery, heavier tanks, things like that. So what artillery do we get here? Very basic stuff. What tanks do we get here? Pretty basic stuff. The only exception is the fact that it gets an M11P Abrams. And you can have a few of these, obviously, in your deck. But you don't get many. So you have to use them sparingly. You're really relying on the Sheridans, which are, in some ways, worse than a lot of APCs or infantry fighting vehicles. You know, they've only got two front armor. And then you got the Humvee, obviously good for anti-tank, but again, it's a soft target. They're going to be very susceptible to artillery. They're going to be very susceptible to auto cannon fire. So this is where the balance comes in. They don't have as many hard hitting units as say the third armored division, the 79th tank division, the 39th infantry division, the eighth infantry division. They all have slightly harder hitting stuff that is more sustainable long term so great early game for pushing for controlling but will struggle more in the later game if you haven't gained ground and maintained that hold for a lot of the game and that's not to say of course you can't push with these you will just have a harder time of it they are designed for getting in early and one of the comparisons i've heard from people who play Steel Division 2 more than I do, is it's a bit like their phase system. So they have phases A, B, and C, I believe. Um, I'm trying to remember from my attempt at playing Steel Division 2. But the idea is that if you have a lot of points in phase 1, you spend more then and you get more units out in phase 1 because you're getting more income. And then in phase 2, you might be getting less, whereas the opponent might be getting more. And the point behind that, I suppose, is that forward deployment is kind of like having a lot of cash for phase A. You're getting to the front lines earlier. It's not the same, but people give me that analogy sometimes. So I'll go with it because they know Steel Division 2 better than me. But there you go, guys. It is pretty straightforward. It's just not truly explained anywhere for new people. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned on the channel. There will be 
more guides and stuff coming up for Warno. It's just I'm really reluctant to put guides out when I know stuff's going to change. But as far as I'm concerned, this is very basic forward deployment lines and this shouldn't change. They shouldn't be making any adjustments to this, I don't think. But I hope just seeing it and me explaining it a little bit has helped some new people out. And I know this will not be helpful at all to people who are experienced with the game, but hopefully it helps those new players out who are a little bit confused when people are talking about forward deployment. But thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all soon.